Welcome to Surviving Medicine, the podcast that takes you into the mind of the best and brightest pre-medical and medical students, residents and physicians, discussing where medical education is today and the future of healthcare tomorrow. Each week, we bring you an inside look at how to survive medical education and how to thrive as a practicing physician balancing work, patients, family, and friends. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. My name is Frank Cusmano, your host, a fourth year PhD student and third year medical student with a passion for anything health, medicine, healthcare related. Before I begin, I want to take a moment to thank you for listening in and following along on our podcast. We would appreciate if you go to your favorite podcast app, leave a review and rate us or follow along in any way possible. Links and show notes will be available at our website, www.survivingmedicine.com for any information and also any links to Board Vitals for today's episode. Without any further ado, Dr. Paul, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, thank you. Yeah, so as, as you mentioned, um, I have uh, traditional beginnings of medical education and sort of veered into more of the um, business side, but staying within medicine. Um, I guess I've always had sort of an interest in entrepreneurial ventures um, and I loved medical education. I loved my education experience and like you said it just um, was a realization that cl clinical practice I guess was not the best fit for me but I still wanted to stay in the same field and help others who you know for whom clinical practice was was really their passion. So. so let's dive back all the way to the beginning. What got you interested in medicine and why did you I guess go into the path of going to the medical school in the first place? Yeah I mean the debate for me prior to applying to medical school was business versus um, medicine. I have a family with you know half engineers and half medical professionals and um, my father is a physician and so it, you know there was definitely the realization that medicine is a good stable career. It falls within my interest in science and, and that was sort of what led me to medicine in the first place. Interesting. So I guess you went to the traditional route of college and then medical school. Tell me a little bit about college years and then going into medical school sure. and how was that transition? Sure. So I grew up in Canada actually and I did my undergraduate degree in Canada um, near the border of Michigan and so when it came time to apply to medical schools I thought well these schools in Michigan are actually closer to my hometown than um, any schools in Canada were and so I gave it a you know sent out some applications in Michigan as well as in Canada and um, ended up being accepted to Michigan State and I didn't know they had never had an international medical student before um, so it was an interesting learning curve for them to you know they didn't realize they needed a visa and so all of that all of that uh, worked out in the end but um, and I ended up there and I had a great educational experience at Michigan State. So, so that's actually really interesting so yeah. I have we Obviously, we, we own an admissions company that, and our listeners know this, that we help students get into medical school for anyone that is, is applying. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a student yesterday from Canada who got okay. into Michigan State. Yeah. And it's really <laughs> funny because now they actually have, and this wasn't like that, I guess, when you went through mm -hmm. their program, but now they actually have a, what's a, called a Canadian initiative, mm -hmm. um, and that it, they specifically have a set number of spots in their school set for Canadian applicants because they know that getting at Canadian applicants into their school may be good because then they're typically going to go back but they're in a mm -hmm. practice right near the border which is like great for mm -hmm. both countries but there's that's kind of sometimes the hardest place to practice. Right. Well, that's interesting because I know you know the year after I came in there was one Canadian who came the next year and then it's sort of grown since then I guess. Yeah wow that's really funny okay so you went to Michigan State how was how was medical school for you? So it was a pretty, I think, traditional, um, common medical school type experience. Um, one unique program they had there that was an international, the opportunity for an international rotation, so I enjoyed that a lot. Um, we went to Central America both third and fourth year um, to do international medicine. So Was that multiple months or is it like a... Yes, yeah, so it was three months in third year and then one month in fourth year. Oh wow, so that yeah. was, were you speaking, were you in kind of a rural environment then? And mm -hmm. Both had, um, we had to learn Spanish, which for some people was easier than uh, for me who had never spoken a word of Spanish before then. But I went to French school um, in Canada, so it was a little overlap and then um, we were sent to various rural um, clinic sites as well as urban um, sites as well. Oh, that's really interesting. So it's interesting to think about that dynamic of 
um, being over here from Canada, going to an American medical school, and then just slowly moving farther <laughs> down south. Um, but it seemed like you always kind of had this passion for helping people and giving back to the community that you that you were in. Um, what made you, where, where did it come about that you started thinking about residency and, and which path you wanted to go down? So I probably was this medical student in my entire year that drove the um, various attendings the most crazy as far as not being able to decide what specialty I wanted to do. I, I did every rotation possible, um, even one week if I could and something just to see if that was it. And I think that was part, probably the, the beginning of my realization that maybe none of them fit right perfectly for me and I kind of wanted to do everything. Um, and so, so, you know, I never had that. I saw one by one all of my classmates finding their calling, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, we did this rotation, this is perfect, I love it, and one by one everyone had sort of categorized themselves and I was left, like, lost, so, um, so that's why I went the internal medicine route, thinking it was broad and general enough that I could hopefully use that first year to figure out mm -hmm. um, what the right path was for, <laughs> from there, uh, and then I switched after my intern year uh, to pathology, because sure. I thought, oh, they like they do everything, they look at everything, yeah. and there's a lot of teaching, and so I love that. Um, and then it just, I think one day, realized that, you know, that within that breadth of knowledge that pathologists have to know, there's a really lack of educational materials. Mm -hmm. um, my husband was a, a psychiatry resident at the time, and they had very few, um, you know, materials or products other than, you know, handwritten notes to study from. And so that's sort of where the first ideas came about to, to do what we're doing now. So your your father was a physician, your yeah. husband as well. Yeah. Is it it's like you're you're around this community of, of medical professionals and it's probably a unique place to where you've been able to see what areas there's weaknesses mm -hmm. in the profession as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think and I keep in touch with all you know, all of my um, classmates and I'm in touch with hundreds of physicians on a daily basis now still, and so it's really interesting to see things change over time. Um, satisfaction in different specialties really can change just based on little policy changes or you know, administration changes in a hospital, and so I, I love doing that. You know, a lot of people say, like, once you leave, don't look, don't look back, but I love looking back, and I love catching back up with all of my clinical physician friends because it's so interesting to see their insights and hear you know what's rewarding about their jobs, what's what's a challenge or a difficulty or something that you know a pain point for them, and it varies a ton from one specialty to the other. So, so that's interesting. What were you, I guess, going through going through medical school and going through residency besides just board examinations um, or licensing exams? Mm -hmm. Where where did you felt like there was a weakness, I guess, in medical education? Because I'm I'm. You're obviously going more towards the board certification and licensing exam disruptions. Like you're going towards to helping push physicians in that way. I'm really interested in medical education. I want to stay as a teacher. Mm -hmm. I want to stay as a professor. And I think that there's some disruption yeah. that's needed in medical education, um, as rudimentary as some of it is. Uh, yeah, what what areas do you think, or do you, looking back, do you think you know you could have done differently, or do you wish that your school had done differently? Yeah, I think one thing I didn't realize was that every school is completely different um, and that really you learn that when you get to residency and that you can see you know what experience people have had before or not and where, where there may have been gaps and I think um, so you know my school specifically I felt had a great focus and primary care focus um, and when we got to some of the you know rotations like ICU it was a little more difficult so I think one one big gap would be just bringing everyone up making sure everyone at every school is up to par for every rotation particularly if they go into a primary care or like a, a general intern kind of year um, so I felt like maybe you know that could be improved um, and then just technology I mean there's so much that's still done in such an inefficient low-tech way that it doesn't make sense anymore <laughs> so I think um, and that's that's improved a lot I know most of the schools now 
have you know all, everything um, available for the most part electronically, and, and there's less paper charting and stuff. But I think it used to be quite um, you know you'd spend more time doing something manually that mm -hmm. you know you could pick up easier through technology. So it's interesting because there's now I don't know if you know the AMA does like these initiative grants, especially for medical education, and it's really interesting because some of the schools have put in um, big frameworks to do more gaming education, which is learning to be a physician through games and through mm -hmm. more simulation-based stuff, mm -hmm. which is, to me, really interesting to think about uh, You know, using a different model of education as mm -hmm. opposed to just traditional book reading or, or just you know doing practice and tests. It's like mm -hmm. these other models may be able to acti activate other pathways that maybe will we'll foster and reinforce some of the concepts. Yeah, and I mean, that's a lot of what we do is try and make everything active learning instead of watching a video or being talked at, like a lecture style environment. Um, when you're having to interact, you're have, you have to choose an answer, you have to click, you have to be actively engaged with the platform. I think they're just way higher retention. So I think anything that um, medical schools could do to make it less lecture type based and more interactive would be would be a big improvement too.